So thank you again for taking a minute out. And I want to begin our conversation with what we've all lived through for the last three and a half years, which was a global pandemic. And how did you get through it? And how did it change you now that we're kind of, you know, everything's opening up now? That was really hard. <laughs> I, yeah. I, my, my husband and I live on our own. And then my family has this mega house and there's like nine of them that live there. And so when COVID happened, it was nothing for them. Right. They still had their little almost like parties. And oh, I don't know about where you guys were at, but when we, where we were at, we could uh, there was a Christmas that we actually couldn't share households. Yeah. And so there they were having their, you know, nine person gala at their place. And me and my husband are by ourselves and we're like, let me in. And they're like, nope. Yeah. And there was a baby as well. So there was, you know, there were some. So it was a very scary time. And I was shocked at how people reacted in mm -hmm. the beginning you know with all the toilet paper gone all this all the madness and I was like am I missing out on something that I'm not getting like why am I not thinking about the toilet we never yeah. ran out of toilet paper so I don't know why everyone was so crazy about it so it's just such an interesting time but I think it was also because that was sort of the beginning of my business um I was just not only was I dealing with everything that was going on outside in the world but I was also dealing with what was going inside of me and yeah. sort of this transition from corporate where everything was really predictable. Everything was, um, I was really good at my job to now taking on something I'd never done, had no idea how it was going to go, but was just so called, like, it was almost like I had no choice in the matter, but there was this, this pull to that, yeah. that I knew that if I did, if I ignored it or, you know, avoided it, that I would regret it later. And so I yeah. kind of just jumped in. So I feel like it was the perfect storm. And I think the old Janelle would have been very frustrated and very um, afraid. Yeah. And I think the new Janelle has really embraced this thing called failure and yeah making mistakes and and also being okay with not knowing what's going to happen next yeah 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 whereas I think the old Janelle was very like controlling needed to know what was going to happen and I think that's a lot of us in life right yeah. we feel like we need to know what, what's going to happen tomorrow but there creates a restriction in what's possible yeah well said I agree I totally agree so there's so many things on paper that are a part of you, okay? Your title is a really long one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this something that will be more digestible. I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third grade students. It's career day. And one okay. of the kids says, what do you do for a living? How do you answer that child? I help people feel better about themselves and their life. Okay. So how would you elaborate that with someone like me that wants to know? What do I, so the question is, what do I do for a living? Well, yeah, like how would you kind of encapsulate exactly what you do and 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 how you how you go about it? That's a complicated question. Right. Um, yeah, because it depends who I'm talking to, right? Because I can right. do so many things. But I think at the yeah. end of the day, it's really about creating an extraordinary life. Right. We all want, we all want that. We don't know sure. how to get it. Yeah, yeah. And so I guess I call myself the Sherpa. There you go. You tell me where you want to go and I'll get you there. You're the guide. You're the guide I'm that good. leads people out of the mountains when they're lost. Yeah. And so many, so many of us are lost or we think we're lost. Right. And we just need someone to tell us, no, you're actually where you are. This messy, swampy, crappy, dirty place that you're at right now is perfect because there's something for you to get out of this experience. And so I think we all feel scared and alone. And I think that's my job is to have people feel that, it, that they're okay, that they're normal, and that they're not alone in this process. And I think yeah. that's what makes me such a great coach is I've been through so much of life that I'm not just one of these people go, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. It's like, no, I get it. I've been yeah. there. I know yeah. what that's like. Yeah. And yeah. you can get out of it. Absolutely. So what did you want to be in the third grade? What was your dream to grow up and become? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be a nurse or a okay. doctor, actually. My mom was a nurse. Okay. And so I, 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 I've idolized my mom since I was a kid. Okay. She is an extraordinary woman. Um, she's one of those moms who never made me want to, didn't try to fit me in a box. Yeah. You know, I think especially as first generation 
Canadian as and the eldest, I think there was a lot of hope for me, right, to be successful in all these things. And even though that was there, there wasn't this like, you need to be this way, you need to have kids. Like, I don't have kids. I've been divorced. I'm Catholic. I kind of did everything backwards. Yeah. Yeah. But my mom just allowed me to be like, it's okay. And when my family would come in and be like, when are you going to get pregnant? When you get married? All of a sudden, my mom's like, you guys leave her alone. Yeah. Like she's doing what she's doing. And so that really gave me a lot of freedom to just be myself. Yeah. And I don't think a lot of us get that opportunity to yeah. really just be who we are. Yeah. That's a big deal. So that was my next question. Who's a hero for you? Who's Who's been an inspiration your whole life? My mom, definitely. And my five-year-old self. My five-year-old self who met, I don't know if you read about my bio, but I met the queen when I was five or six. Yeah. yeah. And that is the woman, the, the little girl in me that is like fearless yeah. <laughs> and will go after whatever she wants, regardless of the consequence. Um, but she follows her heart is who I want to become again. And I'm definitely stepping into that um there's a lot of people I look up to but I think that's those are the 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 the, the top ones that are very like up close my husband I look up to my husband my husband is my inspiration too he's my muse he's my yeah. teacher yeah you know it's interesting your five-year-old self uh it I remember there was a poet that said we're born geniuses and buried idiots you know when we're young we don't have the walls we don't have the restrictions and then yeah. once we get older, we just build all these things around us. Yeah. And it just, you know, we wall ourselves in. So oh, my five-year-old self, I was a I was actually a competitor da competitive dancer since yeah. I was five. Okay. Actually, since I was four. I won my first competition when I was five or six. And so, you know, like that that kid who just I mean, I really again, I really grew up in a really nurturing and loving family yeah. to really express myself. My mom, you know, my dad bought me my first piano when I was two and I, I was born in 77, Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. And my dad would listen to that record player over and over. And eventually I heard it. I could pluck it out. And my parents yeah. were like, huh, maybe we need to put her in piano lessons. Yeah. And then that's how that started. So yeah. I've just been really nurtured and loved since I was a kid. And now I have this really great husband who has sort of continued that that trend but uh yeah so you have a renaissance spirit in you i think so yeah yeah i always wonder who i was in a, in a previous life <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this if you could you know speaking of the queen if you can meet anybody right now alive on the planet who would you meet who would you love to meet and talk to wow i've never been asked that question <laughs> honestly yeah this is going to sound crazy, but my great grandmother. Okay. That's a great answer. Yeah. I'm always so curious about how my mom became who she was. Yeah. Cause she's so different from the rest of them. And she's just, and the stories she tells about my, my great grandmother are like extraordinary. I'm like, I would love, like she had her own business. Yeah. She had like eight kids. She was a single mom. And to and my mom wasn't wasn't raised by her mom because my my grandmother had seven children by three men, okay. and was dirt poor with a grade four education. So my grand my mom got raised by her grandma. Yeah. And my mom started working when she was eleven and put herself wow. through university and got to Canada. Like, I'm really curious of who my mom's mentor yeah. was, and yeah. Uh, just the yeah. My mom has a very forgiving spirit and generous spirit and so it always makes me wonder like what did she go through in life mm -hmm. to be who she is yeah and yeah that's fascinating so what is your motivation every day to get out of bed to accomplish what you want to get done to be you what is that motivator for you to really make a difference you know I went through a really 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 dark time in my life and it took a lot of work for me to get out of that and now I see people suffering and in pain and in the same place I was. And having gone on the other side of that, I really feel called to, to turn around and look at the people behind me and really help them along that path. Because it's a lonely and dark and scary place to be. And I think, I think that there could be so much joy 
and love and peace in the world when we can actually love ourselves. And I think yes. so many of us were taught not to love ourselves, that we have to put everybody first, that if we if we take care of ourselves, it's selfish. And it's just so destructive. Yeah. Like, seriously, like, I'm really getting that now. Yeah. Because, yeah. Um, and honestly, my motivation, and it happened to me when I was 40, I was sitting on the couch and I was thinking about the first half of my life where I'm like okay I'm at the I'm at this half point I can look at this as the best years of my life are gone or I can look like at this as my life is just beginning yeah so I took the I decided to take my life is just beginning okay well what would that look like yeah. and what's the point point? and so what I pictured was myself at the pearly gates of heaven and Saint Peter saying to me Janelle what did you do with your life you know, and up until then, I was selling software. I was traveling the world. I made gobs of money. Like, I was living the life. And yet, I felt like I hadn't actually given myself over to anything bigger than myself. It felt very selfish. Yeah. And I didn't want to die like that. And so yeah. I decided, you know, and at that point, too, I was, I could feel the spiritual restlessness, you know, just your soul being like, hello, wake up. Yeah. And then I woke up and I realized like, okay, I want the second half of my life to be epic. Yeah. And that when I get to that pearly gate of heaven and, and they say, Janelle, what did you do with your life? And who, you know, where did you make the difference? I can say, you know, I impacted 10 million lives yeah. just in sharing my story Yeah. and yeah, standing but, for family. Yeah. That's a great answer. So in this new venture of having your own company and helping people, what's been one of your favorite success stories so far? Of them um my favorite one I would say my favorite one is the one that was sort of the on the verge of divorce one um they are two people who are in the military with very young babies and since like most couples when they have children their relationship changes a lot and um they completely lost connection stopped having sex stopped talking they just started fighting and they were on the verge of divorce. They went to see a therapist, uh, a veteran's therapist, I guess. And uh, they basically said, there's no hope for you. You guys should just get divorced. And this, these are their words. I don't know if that's what actually was said. Sure. Um, and so they had already taken off their rings. They had a 10-month-old and a two-year-old at the time. Wow. And uh, one of one of my clients I was working with worked with the the, the husband and he she said you know before you guys throw in the towel I think you should talk to Janelle and by week two everything changed that's great and she wrote me the most amazing Google testimonial wow and she said you know she saved my life she saved her family like that's great can't. yeah I would that's say wild. That, that was a really that was a really touching one for me but they're all like that. Yeah, they are I get all, it. All like that. So. Yeah, yeah, I totally get it. So let's say you have a dream tonight. You run into the twenty-year-old version of you, and you could give that young version of you a piece of advice based oh. on the wisdom you've gained up to this point. Yeah. What advice would you give that younger version of you? Oh my god, that's an easy one for me. Love yourself. Yeah. Love yourself. I at that time I felt so different, you know, and I was trying so hard to fit in and be popular and be liked. And I was just, I was miserable yeah. because I was trying to be who I thought people wanted me to be, to set, to set, you know, to meet people's expectations or what I thought their expectations of were with me. And I drove myself crazy, like to yeah. depression. And uh, I just, I just, I went through this very numb phase, you know, yeah. where I just, it hurts so much to feel and to, and to realize that my life wasn't going the way I wanted to go, or I wasn't the person I wanted to be. And that who I was in that moment wasn't enough that it occurred like I wasn't enough. And so I was getting in really toxic and dangerous relationships because mm -hmm. I didn't love myself because I was afraid of being lonely. And again, looking bad. And so I just kind of like a lot of people, I just wear this mask and smiley face, but deep down, I was miserable. Yeah. And so I would say, yeah, to love yourself and, and trust yourself. Yeah. What's the best advice you've ever gotten? That's a hard one. Um, I don't know. Best advice. I give so much. So I'm like, is that mine? Is that someone yeah. else's? Right. I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, 
Well, I'll tell you one of my, one of the things I say to myself a lot, and I don't know where it comes from, is I just say, let go, let go and let God. Yeah. I think, again, going back to the control thing, sometimes we just need to let go a little bit and things will just take care of itself. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone out there has a perception of you, family, friends, clients, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Ooh, I like this question. <laughs> um, I'm a healer. I'm a miracle worker. Like, really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm really getting so clear about that. And who I am is a stand for people. And I'm okay with ruffling feathers. I'm okay with getting up in people's faces and saying what it is that they not, not necessarily want to hear, but need to hear. And I had someone yesterday who I did a consult with and I went toe to toe with him and he was getting so confronted and he was trying to end the call. He's like, this isn't working. And I'm like, just be present with me. Just listen to what I'm saying to you. And when he stopped talking and just listened, it was like all of a sudden there was a switch. And by the end of it, he's like, so how do I work with you? And I had to say to him, I, you're actually not my client. Like, no. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But I, that's who I, and, and, and it's funny enough, because what he's dealing with is he's such a people pleaser that he is so afraid of hurting everyone that he will, he will, he lives in a little hole. Yeah. And so it was just, it was perfect how he was getting confronted by my honesty. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, right. What's the, not, yeah. so I'm curious with a lot of your clients, you get to see something that a lot of a lot of us don't realize. What's a common thread? What's one of the top mm -hmm. things that people don't realize? And then when you meet with them, they're like, oh, okay, I get it now. That we are the source of our own happiness. We're looking all the way out here, looking for happiness from here, from her, from him, for validation. And we don't realize it <laughs> because we're so programmed like that. Yeah. Right. I think that when we can wake up to the fact that it's nobody's job except ourselves to make ourselves happy, then we stop put stop putting pressure on other people. And maybe we can actually have like really great relationships. I had a 22 year old, I was, a personal trainer asked me one day, I was training. People always ask me what I do. And all of a sudden, they, all the questions come, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he says to me, what is one piece of advice you can give someone like me who's 22 with my girlfriend? And I said, don't have expectation. Yeah. And he's like, what? And I said, well, consider that if you actually just love people and accepted people the way they are, you wouldn't have expectation. My husband makes coffee every single morning and I am, I love it. And I never expect it because if yeah. I don't expect it, then I'm delighted. Uh -huh. But if I expect it and he doesn't do it, well, now I'm upset. Yeah. Yep. That's totally true. I had a friend tell me that years ago. He was the... He was telling me some vignette of a story and said that. And I was like, that's totally true. Once you get rid of that, it's like it makes everything that much better. Well, yeah. And I mean, let's let's talk about peace for a second. Like everybody wants peace, but nobody knows how to create that. And the yeah. problem why we can't create peace is, yeah, peace is acceptance is part of it, but that's not all of it. What's right. actually all of it and the part that people struggle with is to have peace. You actually have to give up that anything's wrong. Right. And that's like people can't get wrap their minds around that. It's like, what do right. you mean nothing's wrong? But this and this and this and this and this. It's like, yeah, but consider that's all perfect. Right. And you're just creating it as a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's why, you know, again, why peace is like everyone when there's two things people will say they want when I when I come to a consult, peace and happiness. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of the same, right? right? They're kind of in the same ballpark. But what's required to have those things that are a lot harder to, to attain, especially when you don't even realize what you're doing to, yeah. to sabotage that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's deep. So if anyone wants to hire you, learn more about you, reach out to you, where's the best place for them to go? Best place for them to go is probably my website, which is JanelleGreen.com or SaveOurMarriage.ca. And yeah, you know, I'm really passionate about marriage because obviously I'm married um, but I also just, you know, I help people who are professionals, like who I was 20 years ago that are just feeling a little restless and like, okay, yeah. what's next? I've reached the top of this. I've reached the top of this mountain. Yeah. What's my next mountain? Yeah. That's where I, that's the, the stuff I love. I get super juiced up about. Yeah. 
That's wonderful. Man, I can tell you got you got you got a gift. You got a good gift. Janelle, thank you so much for you, opening Jeff. up. Thank you for your time and your story and best of luck with everything. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care.